My name is H.J. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist. First and foremost, let me say, God bless the Korean people. Um, I had the great pleasure of growing up with many wonderful, beautiful, dear friends who are Korean-American. And the culture, the people, um, Koreans are just beautiful, beautiful people. And this is a really historic, paradigm-changing beautiful, breathtaking, grandiose, amazing occasion. It's just so beautiful. And I don't want to, you know, use profanity during this segment, so I won't. <laughs> and I'll try to keep my thoughts about the Democratic Party um, at least to a minimum or definitely without the use of any vulgar language it's difficult to do but i i do believe that trump kim jong-un and definitely moon jae-in and possibly also xi jinping of china moon jae-in of south korea and kim jong-un of north korea and trump president trump all deserve the nobel peace prize if you could have a a three-way or four-way nobel peace prize that would be very much um they they all deserve well definitely south korea's moon jae in north korea's kim jong-un and trump president trump north korean summit trump kim signed comprehensive document there's there's been a war since 1953 the korean war was from 1950 to 1953 there was a ceasefire. There was no peace agreement. There was a ceasefire. And the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea, there, it was basically a division, a, a, a war zone. A, 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 you had two sides always watching one another. I mean, you even had, there were reports of North Korea viewing Christmas lights on the South Korean border as an act of war. Okay, that was the type of thing that was going on. People were pulled uh, from the South Korean side onto the North Korean side and taken prisoner. Shots were fired that we would never, we, we don't ever hear about. And then, of course, you had a whole bunch of people dying over the years from the tension and the the cold war that they faced every day north and south korea so there's now a comprehensive document signed by trump and kim jong-un and it's just how could you possibly it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is let's put it this way if hillary clinton signed this i would have to just give it up to hillary clinton there's, and not in a million years would she ever have even come close to this. Her thing was she told bankers, Goldman Sachs bankers, that she was very proud. She threatened China to ring China with missile defense. This is from WikiLeaks um, publishing her speech transcripts that she tried to hide from everybody. So it's like <laughs> she tried to hide every she's tried to hide her speech from usually people want you to hear their speech. She hides her speech. Anyway, don't get me started. This is a beautiful, beautiful occasion. Let me just read you this. North, North Korea summit. Trump Kim signed comprehensive document updates. Okay, so let me go ahead and read this. By the way, I have a new channel. It's almost at 4,000 subscribers. So in addition to this one, hit subscribe right now. We have over 115,000 subscribers. We're on our way to 120,000 on this channel. But I also have, have a channel called HA Second Amendment. And I actually bought a California legal um, AK-47. And it's a California legal century arms uh, AK and uh, semi-automatic uh, sporting rifle. And uh, I look forward to having uh, wonderful segments and footage to show everybody. Um, but anyway, that's below. The unboxing of that is below. That's a side note. It's not even important, but I'm just, I have a new channel also in addition to this one. I started the channel, what, three weeks ago. It's almost at 4,000 subscribers now, so I'm happy. HA Second Amendment. So if you're interested in the Second Amendment or firearms, check that out. President Trump and North, North Korea, President, President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un signed 
a document that Mr. Trump described as important and comprehensive to conclude their meetings in Singapore. The document, which offers few details about how the aims will be accomplished, says North Korea commits to working towards denuclearization. Did you ever in your wildest dreams, did you ever fathom, did you ever imagine, did you ever think this was possible? I didn't. I mean, the, Trump, Clinton, doesn't matter. Bernie, I, I, I didn't. I never thought that this would happen, actually. I never thought that this could take place. And if you're watching in South Korea, please let me know your thoughts. Or if you're Korean anywhere in the world, the U.S. or anywhere in the world, let me know your thoughts. Did you ever think this day would take place? This is just a beautiful, the epitome of, you know, a groundbreaking moment in world history. This is beyond U.S. history. Okay, you're going to learn about people. Kids will learn about this in U.S. history class, I'm sure. But this is, this is world history now. Mr. Trump said he absolutely will invite Kim to the White House. Could you imagine Kim Jong-un in the White House? And I, I don't want to get negative. I don't want to get negative. I don't want to get negative. But, but, the Democratic Party is, what, what can they say? <laughs> what can they say? <laughs> what can MSNBC and CNN say? They already don't like the good economy, so... You know, now now this, and people ask me, how could you go from a Bernie Sanders supporter to a Trump supporter? How dare you? Um, how about peace between North and South Korea? How about Kim Jong-un at the White House? How about one less nuclear threat in the world? And not a th not, I, I don't think Trump is going to sign a deal where he's going to allow <laughs> Kim Jong-un to have ballistic missile tests. Obama signed a fantastic deal that allowed 23 ballistic missile tests, or what, 21 or 23 ballistic missile tests from uh, the Iranian government. Now, if, if your aim is to stop Iran from having a nuke, and you allow them to engage in ballistic missile tests, <laughs> you're not doing good. So this is not, this is infinitely better than the Iranian nuclear deal, because they already have nuclear weapons in North Korea. Kim Jong Un has, you know, Aura is and and um, and his father and the North Korean regime have, for many years, threatened nuclear war. So this is a much bigger, bigger deal, bigger issue than the Iran deal, much bigger. And you also have South Korea, who was threatened. The that that the main threat was North Korea to South Korea, not North Korea to the U.S. And now, thank God, you know, things are better. So when I say God bless the Korean people, I mean, I, I mean it. This is a really beautiful, momentous time. And I hope, I hope that all these leaders build upon this moment in history. You can't just be complacent. You can't just go ahead and say, well, you know, sign the deal. Let's see. Because then you could slide back into, you know, belligerent, belligerence and, and animosity very quickly. So as they began the summit, Mr. Trump said he thinks he and Kim will have a terrific relationship, and Kim, through a translator, said North Korea had to overcome a number of obstacles to get to this point. Mr. Trump and Mr. Kim... Uh, by the way, do you remember that, that beautiful, amazing picture of South Korea's President Moon Jae-in and... Uh, and Kim Jong Un uh, shaking hands at the DMZ. I believe it's at the DMZ. Isn't that wasn't that beautiful? It, it was just unbelievable. Mr. Trump and Kim participated in one-on-one -on -one meetings with translators only, followed by an extended meeting, including their top advisors, and a working lunch, which I heard on on Twitter. See. <laughs> CNN was complaining about the menu. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they have to have to hate, don't you know? They have to hate. It's a little side note, try to be positive. Try to be positive. Uh, but I can't be completely positive. Uh, Democrats are going to lose miserably in 2018 in the midterms. Miserably. Miserably. 
meaning they're not going to they're not going to have a Democratic Speaker of the House. It's going to be hopefully Devin Nunes since Paul Ryan's leaving. Good riddance. But um, I have I have a buddy, and I I wanted to. <laughs> I was going to bet him on cuz he knows he knows the Senate's done. The Senate's going to go Republican. And and there are a lot of reasons I want Republicans to win. Namely, one big reason is because it's a peaceful a very peaceful way to completely dismantle the Democratic Party and the DNC. But anyway, he wouldn't even bet me that. He was like he's like, "Oh, I'm not going to bet you." I'm talking a dollar, okay? It's not like some kind of like, you know, Gamblers Anonymous, like a dollar, like a like for pride, you know, like brag, like bragging rights. He knows, he knows. It's even like the, the polls now, like they were down to three point two, and now they're down to they're up to they're up back to to seven points. Oh wow, seven points! Wow. I'll go back to three, and they'll go back to two, or they'll go to two, and then finally on on in November, <laughs> in the midterm elections, they'll it'll be like oh. Democrats only got 10 seats more. They needed 20, 22 or 24. Wah, wah, wah. Anyway, and I mean, if Trump wins the Nobel Peace Prize, which he should, he should win the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, it's, then it's really game over. But let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. And Clinton warned U.S. would ring China with missile defense. So what a counterproductive way of doing things. You're going you're gonna to attack China to ensure that North Korea is no longer a threat. If you understand politics and that geopolitics in that region of the world... Explain below how that's, why that's a stupid thing from, for Obama and Clinton to have done. The whole point of China's relationship with North Korea was that North Korea was a way to occupy the United States or to threaten the United States. Maybe not directly, but through North Korean um, threats or whatever. So if you, if you threaten China, that gives them more incentive to ensure that North Korea remains isolated but anyway it's this too complicated for democrats to understand so let's just continue um this is a cbs news article there's a great article from haaretz an israeli publication and i'll go ahead and um read that but hold on one second so they're signing a, a deal. Okay, video of Trump departing signing ceremony. Wow. President Trump and Chairman Kim Jong-un depart signing ceremony. Okay, so. Pompeo, high-level North Korean official to continue conversation. Joint document claims North Korea commits to working towards complete denuclearization. Wow. Amazing. The document... Mr. Trump and Kim signed lists four provisions, including reaffirming North Korea's commitment to working towards complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The United States and North Korea commit to establishing establish to commit to establish new U.S. North Korean um, re, uh, relations in accordance with the desire of the peoples of the two countries for peace and prosper prosperity. The United States. And North Korea will join their efforts to build a lasting will, will join their, to build a lasting and stable peace regime on the Korean Peninsula, reaffirming the April 27, 2018 um, declaration. The deep the the, the North Korea, North Korea commits to work toward complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Oh wow! The United States and North Korea commit to recovering POW MIA remains including the immediate repatriation of those already identified. Wow. So this goes deep. I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is deep, and this is, um, 
you know, this is the type of thing where when I say that Trump is less hawkish than Clinton, well, that I meant that. And th this is just one example. It's a great example. It's a big example. But let's go ahead here. Okay, so Trump, Kim, summit, North Korea commits to work towards complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. That, that it's un, that's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Absolutely, I mean, remarkable, I should say. Trump to absolutely invite Kim to the White House says denuclearization process will start quickly, very quickly. Okay, so, wow. President Trump committed to provide security guarantees to North Korea and Chairman Kim Jong-un reaffirmed his firm and unwavering commitment to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Wow. This is from Connor Finnegan, ABC News, uh, State Department producer reporter. So, it's just unbelievable. In, in, in I don't want to get, like I said, I don't want to get negative, but what is it that, and that we won't use the word, but what is it that Rob, uh, Robert De Niro said just, what, hours back? It, it, the, there's certain people in the country who are so brainwashed that they don't want peace. <laughs> what kind of individual do you have to be? What kind of, what kind of character do you have to have as a human being? That you don't want peace. It's one I, I have a limit. Like if if Clinton or Debbie Wasserman Schultz or any of it would never happen because that's not what they do. But let's say, for example, any of them, any Democrat did what Trump is doing in North Korea. The Iran deal was <laughs> that was not nearly as important, even if it worked out, as what's taking place now. What's taking place now is just something of epic proportions. You are now, this, this is already a nuclear power. North Korea already has nuclear weapons. And, oh, by the way, Obama's administration, what, secretly lied to Congress. And behind the back of every congressman and congresswoman allowed Iran seven billion dollars again you know there's a i don't really actually if iran gets the bomb or not or the nuclear that's kenneth waltz has kenneth waltz is, was a is or well, no was a phenomenal phenomenal international relations scholar he wrote about nuclear weapons and he was one of the foremost scholars on nuclear weapons and he was talking about how actually nuclear weapons. He 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 was nineteen. He was born in 1924, died in, 19, in 2013. He was really amazing. I studied Ken, about Kenneth Waltz. He wrote a book called *Man, the State, and War*, which was amazing. And he also talked about how nuclear weapons sometimes keep you safe, keep the world safer. Since we would have had, we would, would have already had a world war. But the thing with Kenneth Waltz is that he didn't, he actually didn't care if, a, I mean, not that he didn't care, but uh, countries acquiring the nuclear bomb made them, in a way, more responsible for their actions. So I actually don't really, I don't think they're suicidal. And even if Iran got the nuclear weapons, uh, they're definitely working on them. But even if they got a nuclear weapon, it's a defensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon. And. But if your goal, like President Obama's goal, was, oh, we're going to go ahead and sign a deal, well, that's a it was a horrible deal. This is different. This is a lot different. And this is actually much more difficult to have achieved because you're dealing with somebody who already had a weapon. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. God bless the Korean people. Thank you so much for listening.